Welcome back, Screen Ranters. Happy New Year! 2019 was... a thing that happened. It had its ups and downs in the film industry. And one of those downs is the topic of today's video. We're talking about Cats, the musical play turned musical movie that attracted a lot of negative attention. Some of it's justified, but going by the IMDb fan and critic reception, wow, Cats really didn't do so well. So today we're going to take a look at the creepy and cringy moments from this CGI feline flick. And there's quite a few. Before we go any further, here's the obligatory spoiler warning. Now that that's out of the way, buckle up kids, as we'll get cracking. That could have gone better. <laughs> Our first entry is right at the beginning of the film. Enjoy the chronological order while it lasts. Anyway, as the film opens, we see Victoria, played by Francesca Hayward, being thrown out by her owner, which also gives us our first glimpse of the bizarre human-cat hybrid CGI. As Victoria escapes from her bag, she's surrounded by the Jellicle cats. Jellicle are essentially a cult of cats. They believe that when one of them are chosen, they get to ascend to the heaviside layer, which is basically heaven. So Victoria, who's just coming to terms with being abandoned, gets assaulted with a song about her new life. The cats break out the tune Jellicle Songs for Jellicle Cats. The opening introduces many of the cat characters, however, barely any have their name referenced. It's confusing. By the way, a quick heads up, if you didn't know, many of the cats have unusual names. Anyways, the cats dance around during this jaunty tune as well. The song does provide a taste of what's to come. A feline faction of fierce festivity. The dancing even has a touch of lewd behavior, something which we'll touch on more later. Once the song is complete, they seem to induct Victoria into their ranks. The opening act is a bit like Marmite slash Vegemite. You either love it or are completely horrified by it. Catnip has a particular effect on cats. It can sedate them, thus making them more receptive to the demands of their pet humans. It can also make them lose themselves for around 10 or so minutes. By that, we mean having a bad trip. Catnip's effects are often compared to the effects of marijuana or LSD on humans. So with that in mind, it's a tad strange to see the cats being drugged against their will. As Taylor Swift makes her debut as Bomba Larina, she proceeds to sing and sprinkle catnip all over the concerned Jellicle kitties. She also gets help from Mungo Jerry and Rumple Teaser in spreading the sparkly powder. As a result, the catnip-covered cats get rather sleepy and collapse onto the floor in some kind of ecstasy. It's a lot of intense drug use in one scene. Granted, catnip isn't an herb that affects people, but as they're human-cat hybrids, it definitely seems inspired from their human counterparts. Bomba Larina does all of this to help out McCavity, played by Idris Elba. He's the villain of the film that's some kind of mob boss sort of character. The plan was to drug the cats so they could catnap Judy Dench's character, Old Deuteronomy. Oh, and it's supposed to be a family film, BT dubs. Real life cats don't usually wear clothes. Well, unless they're humans like to play dress up with them. Cats have fur to keep themselves warm after all. Usually the only fabric most would wear is a collar. But in this film, some of the cats are all dressed up. Lori Davison's Mr. Mistopheles, James Corden's Bustopher Jones, McCavity, and Judy Dench's character are some of the cloth wearing kitties. Usually it's shown to highlight certain character aspects, such as Mr. Mistopheles being a magic cat. But if some cats wear clothes, what about the ones that don't even have a collar on? Are they considered nudists? It's never really fully addressed. Judy Dench wears a fur coat on top of a fur coat attached to her skin. The coat also resembles cat fur, which raises the question of whose fur is that? What poor cat did she shave to make it? And where is that poor kitty? Or is the coat somehow made from her own fur? We don't know. Put your theories in the comments below. Even if it is her own fur, that's still really weird. Imagine if your friend wandered around in a coat made from their own hair. You'd probably want to sit them down and give them a talking to pretty quick. At least that's what our friends did for us. Clothes on some of the kitties just brings up way too many questions. Yeah, this one just had to get its own entry. It's just that weird. Robbie Fairchild's Monka Strap introduces us to a new character, that being Rebel Wilson's Jenny Adots. She's a house cat that lounges around during the day, and she also enjoys, ahem, <coughs> scratching herself. But this old Gumby cat gets very active at night. When we first see Jenny Adots, she's a cat that's only in a collar. However, as her song picks up, 
she decides to do something rather gross. She peels off her skin to reveal an outfit under her fur. This outfit is jazzier as well. She wears a pink vest with musical note designs. She also has sequins sprinkled all over the rest of her fur. She does this in order to increase the energy of her song by dancing more enthusiastically. Still, and it bears repeating, it's under her skin that she's wearing these clothes. It's just bizarre. Sure, it's probably a metaphor for her true self being within, but still, this isn't the only time she does this skin swap. Later on, she unzips her skin again. So we get to be traumatized all over multiple times. Yay! That's what you want from a moving picture the whole family can enjoy. At the beginning of Cats, everything seems to be scaled normally in size. However, that changes once Victoria is tossed away by her former cat guardian. That's a reference to the cat daddy Jackson Galaxy. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, suddenly Victoria's bag seems to grow in size. That's because the set has been adapted to the size of a cat. For example, as we see in the milk bar, the seats are really large compared to the cats. It's a nice touch. At least it was. It was all gravy until the filmmakers decide to throw that consistency out of the window. During Jenny Adot's introduction, we see a posse of mice. As such, the mice are small, which is to be expected. However, they're really small compared to the cats. That shouldn't be the case. They should be larger than normal since the cats have already been scaled to their environment. This continues when the horrifying cockroaches are brought in too. They're designed to be tiny critters even though they should be bigger as well. Due to this, it takes the audience out of the story just a little bit. While it doesn't ruin the whole film, other stuff did that already, it does show a lack of care from the creators. Then again, having larger versions of these Mike and cockroaches would probably generate nightmares for audience members for weeks. Quick kitty bit. Another Jackson Galaxy reference. Remember to subscribe to Screen Rant and click that little bell. That way, you'll be notified every time that we publish a new video. It's pretty cat-tastic. If you're on mobile, make sure you turn on notifications in your settings. Now back to your scheduled programming. Filmmaking is a tricky business. There are so many deadlines to hit to reach the production company's scheduled release date. It's even harder when the film in question employs vast amounts of CGI. As a result, mistakes are bound to happen if a film is rushed through to its premiere, which is exactly what happened to Cats. Only hours before the anticipated premiere, the director, Tom Hooper, was still editing the movie. He spent 36 hours consistently editing. Rushing an edit like that has definitely affected the quality and many mistakes can be seen. For example, the cats and cats have human hands. They are sometimes covered with fur and claws to make them more cat-like, but a lot of the time the hands are untouched by CGI. Because of this, we can clearly see Dame Judi Dench's hands during scenes, complete with her wedding ring. Another example involves Rebel Wilson. Her human, non-cat hand slash paw is clear to see. In part due to this, the film so far hasn't done too well at the box office. But Universal Pictures were adamant that the film had to come out at this time, even if it also had to battle with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker at the box office. If Universal had just waited a few weeks, they could have put out a finished film, but nah. Now we're at an entry that we briefly mentioned earlier. Fun! Once again, it involves the introduction of Jenny Adats. She's shown to have enslaved some mice to perform for her amusement. If you look closely, you can see the poor creatures have human faces like their cat counterparts. This makes their forced servitude a little bit more disturbing. Later on in the scene, we're introduced to Jenny Adats' other reluctant plaything, cockroaches. It's truly creepy. They're also forced to take part in the song, but with the added threat of being eaten. Even if they're not doing anything wrong, Jenny Adats will still tuck into them. She's even seen picking up cockroaches and biting their heads off. Yay! Family film. Granted, the other cats casually tuck into them as well. It's all not down to Jenny Adats. But the others aren't quite as gruesome as when Jenny Adats chows down on them. For fun, there's even a crunchy sound effect added in as the cockroaches meet cat teeth. By giving the other creatures human attributes, it really amps up the grossness as they're being obliterated. Cats like to hiss and meow at people. They can't talk to us, so they have to come up with other methods. With each other, they'll rely on body language and scent, but humans aren't too great at picking up on those aspects from their feline friends. However, in cats, the cats talk. They don't need to meow and whatnot. Instead, they can just use regular people words. But for some reason, they'll regularly meow and hiss at each other. That's what I say to you. 
Cats don't meow at other cats, by the way. So it's weird that the film would plop that in. Sir Ian McKellen's character, Gus the theater cat, makes cat noises at every opportunity. It's like the filmmakers really wanted us to know we were watching a group of cats, as though the title wasn't really a clue. On top of that, the cats like to make cat-based puns and idioms. We get the pleasure of hearing cats got your tongue, cats out of the bag, etc. After a while, it got tired and old, quite frankly. It was really catastrophic. Yeah, we went for it. We're sorry. Oh boy, this one's gonna be fun. Especially in all the ways that we have to avoid saying certain words on YouTube. So the cats in Cats are very lascivious? In a lot of the songs, the cats will be doing some suggestive poses. But Screen Rant, that's just cats being cats, we hear you yell. Well, dear viewer, these aren't just cats. They're some sort of weird human-cat hybrid. Any suggestive behavior is going to be interpreted as the humans doing it. Also, it's meant to be a family film, so usually these moments would be avoided. Instead, at times, we felt uncomfortable in the cinema. None more so than when Rum Tum Tugger would appear. Even his name contains a raunchy euphemism. During his introduction, Tugger would parody Mick Jagger and Prince. By this, we mean a lot of hip thrusts and suggestions. The actors also had skin-tight suits on, so certain body parts that we humans have that cats don't were highlighted. We're sure you know what we mean. The final cringe entry is probably the most documented aspect of the film, the poor CGI. As we mentioned earlier, the whole post-production procedure was rushed in order to release this flick to the masses. However, it doesn't quite explain some of the other CGI choices. In particular, the blending of human and cat features. The cats have human faces. Sure, there's whiskers, but their human noses really stand out. Even the stage production used makeup to make those noses more cat-esque. Even after the first trailer was released to an uncomfortable and confused audience, Universal pressed ahead regardless. When a similar reaction happened for the Sonic film, Paramount went away and made drastic changes to the CGI. While the film's release has been delayed, it's a small price to pay for responding to the fans' reaction. Due to Universal's original lack of action, the film has been panned by both critics and fans. The reception got so bad that Universal have now released a new re-edited version to cinemas. A situation like this happening to an already released film is unprecedented. We'll have to wait and see if this new version can save this filmic box office flop. But more than likely, the cat's already out of the bag. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Jeepers, that was uncomfortable. What do you think is the weirdest moment in the film? Are people being too harsh on it? What other plays should get a film adaptation? Write your comments down below, please. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.